In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. In the year 1509, if you can think back to that year, uh, it's 507 years ago, there was a, a man who was born whose name was Gerasimos. And Gerasimos, um, the name as we see in common days for the translation for those who are um, Americanized the name, I guess, would be Jerry or Gerasimus would be kind of the, the uh, English translation of that. But Gerasimus was um, a man who became uh, a great prayer and faster. And through his prayer and through his fasting, uh, he came to the point in his life where he said, I want to go to Jerusalem and I'm going to go to Jerusalem and I am going to go in the desert where Christ went and I'm going to fast for 40 days. So he goes into the desert to fast for 40 days. He doesn't eat anything as Christ didn't have anything either during that time. And in that time, if we look at the time when Christ fasted, what became the victorious part of fasting and prayer that he had in the desert? Well, as he prayed and as he fasted, the devil came to him three times and he was able to tell the devil to go away. And finally he sends him away and the devil doesn't uh, bother him anymore at that point. Well, St. Gerasimus was, um, who I'm speaking about, uh, had the gift of expelling demons for, for many years and when he became uh, a monastic and went into the desert in the Holy Lands for 40 days. When he came out, he had complete authority over the evil uh, in the world and he became known as the burner. So B-U-R-N-E-R. -E That's right, you heard it right, burner. And the reason he was called the burner is because many times when people would come to him who were possessed, they would yell, Gerasimus, you are burning me. And he was called in Greek, the burner. And he became one who was well known for um, exorcisms in the Orthodox Church, but also the patron saint for healing the mentally ill. So people who had some type of uh, mental illness um, whatever it was, and also the tie over from the mental illness to those who became possessed. Now we look at the Bible and we hear the stories of Christ healing the demoniacs, healing the boy with uh, seizures, and we also see that there's a blurred line between mental illness and demonic possession. Historically, there's always been that, that variance in, in saying, well, somebody is, is mentally ill or are they just flat out possessed. Well, St. Gerasimus had covered both of those bases in understanding that when people would come to him, they would be healed of many of their mental illnesses and also the ones who were uh, possessed and known to be possessed would come into the church and cry out, yell, scream, you're burning me. And there's many stories, and I'm going to take a few minutes to t tell you about um, the stories of St. Erasmus, but he's also called, uh, considered a walking saint. In other words, he is a saint whose relics are incorrupt. So that's 507 years that, his, that he had, was born, and he died in 1590, or 1579, so he was exactly 70 years old when he had passed away and gone to be with God. But his relics have remained incorrupt. In other, in other words, his face, his skin, everything, it's dry, it's brown. But he is standing up in what appears to be as a, a bishop's throne, and it's gold. And he is vested. And when his feast day comes, which is October 20th, and also a second feast day on October or August 16th, his relics are brought through the street. So they have, like we have the Cavuclion and we carry, the parish council members carry it. And they, they walk, we walk around or we stand in the back and you go underneath the Cavuclion. Uh, the same thing happens with uh, St. Gerasimus on his feast day. 
is because there's so many people that want to be uh, healed by him that they line the streets. Now just think, if you've ever seen um, like people when they do the human dominoes and they sit, one sits with their legs out and the other one sits behind them with their legs out and then they kind of fall backwards. Just imagine the whole street through Fifth Avenue lined with people laying down. And some of those people are looking for the blessing of St. Gerasimus and other people are put there by their family members and they're screaming. And when the body passes over, uh, the relics pass over those people, they're healed. St. Gerasimus also um, has a, a part in, his, in, his, in the monastery where he's at on Kefalonia or Kefalonia, and he, there's a very thin door that you can go in, and the, the continued stories that you hear is that if you have faith and understand and believe in God, you're able to fit through the door. And if you don't, if you're doubting, then you cannot fit through this door. And there's story after story about people going in. Uh, many people would, uh, women would go if they were having problems with a pregnancy. So a pregnant woman going, going through this thin door. And one of the, the stories that's written said of a, a person who was there that they saw a pregnant woman in her final days of her pregnancy going through the door with ease and a very thin woman who was doubting the whole thing who could not fit through the door. his miracles that um, are documented over and over and over. Uh, one of them is in the 1700s when cholera broke out on the island and the nun uh, was praying to God one night at the, at the convent and she saw a vision of St. Gerasimus talking to the Virgin Mary. And the Virgin Mary said to St. Gerasimus specifically that through your prayers, the St. Gerasimus' prayers, that I've asked my son and our Lord and God, and he will protect the island from the breaking of this cholera, this epidemic, this illness. So the nun woke up in the morning and she said, it's a miracle. The St. Gerasimus had prayed to the Virgin Mary and this, this miracle is, has happened and we're not going to die from this outbreak. So one of the women of the, the area came and she said, you know, these are children's stories. This is all jokes and this is uh, silly things. There's no way that this nun could have this vision of the St. Gerasimus talking to the Virgin Mary and the Virgin Mary is telling him about Christ and all. These are, these are children's tales to make the kids feel good. Well, that night the lady went to bed and she had a dream. And in the dream, St. Gerasimus appears to her, as we've heard before, as I've mentioned with some of the other saints, St. Gerasimus appears to her and says, I have a children's story to tell you. And by my prayers and by the mercy of the Virgin Mary, that Christ will not allow the, the island to be um, injured or, or succumb to this outbreak of disease. And he had a staff, and he took his staff, and he hit the woman on the side with his staff in the dream. She woke up in the morning, she went to church, and she said, St. Gerasimus appeared to me, and he told me that it is true. And then she showed the bruise that was on her arm from his staff. So there's story after story after story of St. Gerasimus healing people and becoming um, uh, a huge uh, exorcist in the church and also a huge, I don't want to say psychiatrist, I mean you could say that, but he uses the holy medicine to heal and the, the power of God to heal. So last year um, there was... Uh, a, a connection with um, the monastery at Kefalonia uh, for St. Gerasimus' monastery. And I had mentioned that I wanted to have, uh, because he's an incorrupt saint, that many times with St. Saint Dionysius is on the top and St. Gerasimus is on the bottom, uh, their shoes are changed. 
and their shoes, they, so they form shoes and they place them on the saint and usually it's 40 days and then they're taken off and they're only given to um, communities that request them and it's done by request. So last year I had requested a shoe of St. Gerasimus and it finally came after a long, uh, very unique road to the church because Greece just decided to go on strike shipping things so it was shipped it it made it part of the way and then it got returned back to Athens it sat in customs for a while and then it was returned back uh, and then reshipped again so it finally came so I, I had mentioned that we were going to request a shoe last year uh, but it just took an extraordinary amount of time to, to, to get it um, the shoe was on his foot for 40 days and um, many times through the, the items that touch the saints and through the, the grace that comes through, um, I mean, one of the, the classic examples of the grace that comes through an item, if you want to call it that, or a relic in the church, is the Holy Cross. Christ was on the cross, and the cross, the pieces, the fragments of the cross have been miraculous, the relics of saints. And we pray that through this uh, shoe that is here for good, it's here always, um, and it will be in this reliquary box underneath his icon on the side for you to, to venerate. Um, we pray that his, his saintly intercessions and for those who are struggling with temptation, that for those who are struggling with um, mental illness, depression, anxiety, um, uh, whatever it is, that you ask for his blessings and you ask for his intercessions and the the shoe itself we're, we're going to have a tray is in the process of being fashioned right now uh, an appropriate tray that will have his name uh, engraved on it uh, but this will always be here for us and i pray we'll have it out today um, as we will on sundays for you to venerate um, i'm going to put it in the box now because i know that some of um the Sunday school teachers will leave early uh, to go. So if you wanted to come up for during communion, if you're a Sunday school teacher and wanted to venerate the shoe, you can do so uh, prior to uh, receiving the sacrament, but everyone else to please wait at the end. And what we'll do from now on, I know that sometimes people get their bread and they come up across the Solea, but we have to have some a, a little order in how we come up now. So we're having more things that are um, coming to the church. So if you, at the end of the church service, if you want to venerate the relics, you can kind of make a way on the, the line there and then venerate St. Erasmus and then come up for uh, St. Athanasios' um, relics as well. So this is a, a huge blessing for us in, in the church, for all of us. And uh, I, I pray that you read about St. Erasmus and understand that uh, he is, uh, with his stern look, he's, he's business. He's all business. Um, and his scroll that it says on um, his scroll, it says the greatest art that we can um, cultivate. It's not music, it's not dancing, it's not drawing. It's the, the art of inner peace. And uh, that's what his scroll says. But I know that for those, everyone has someone who is, um, let's say, a little bit crazy in your family. Um, you might have someone who you might look at and say, you know, that person is just... They're bizarre, they're, um, they, they have to be possessed or whatever. Just come and say uh, a prayer in, in front of St. Erasimus to venerate his icon as well as the reliquary and to ask for his intercessions. For those who, um, several weeks ago, I mentioned about St. John and we wrote letters to St. John. Remember, we sent the letters in. Uh, there's about, I think, seven miracles that have happened within that first week of the letters going in within days of the letter as three days two days one day the day it was dropped off people are like hey on wednesday this happened and on this day this happened and um, those uh, letters if you still want to submit those letters you can still write them um, i will deliver them i don't open them i just forward them on but if you have uh, some special requests to uh, saint john you can do so uh, continually and to remember, someone uh, asked me recently, and said, how do I do that? How do, what do I say? What do I do? Um, just close your eyes 
envision the saint in front of you, what would you say to him? And write it down, that's all. And then we just forward those on. So I'm very pleased that we have this prior to um, uh, Pascha this year, and um, that's why I'm wearing red to match. And, uh, and I have his Epigonatio in here that we celebrate his, um, his memory. Again, has the um, uh, scroll in there, but it's a, it's a great thing for our church to have that will always be here for generations to generations. And I know that everyone has some connection, as you will discover, to the need for St. Gerasimus in your life. Amen.